Do you want to build a Fortnite game that works like this? This is Fortnite Creative 2.0, UEFN, and you're gonna do things that have never been done before. You're gonna build the ultimate spider squishing, exploding experience of your lifetime. We're talking about enemy AI, where they follow you and look at you, where you can shoot them and they explode with sound effects and visuals, where they can attack you and you can actually get damage and die. We're gonna show your score on the screen with user interface how to import assets and skeletal meshes and animations and so many other things all right here in this course. And it's absolutely free. Wow. Okay, well, uh, let's totally do that. Open a new project here. We're gonna go to blank and I'm going to call this the spider squisher. Boom, okay, create. So I have a brand new project, just like you. And what we're gonna do first off is get the assets we need for this project. So over here on Sketchfab, you can get this free little kitten or you can buy this spider. I can't buy it for you, but you can buy it if you want. I bought the spider. If you don't wanna spend money, get the cute little kitten. But let me warn you, if you pick the kitten, you're gonna be exploding cute, innocent kittens. <laughs> uh, which I completely support. So feel free to grab this little guy if you want. Just make sure you give credit here. And uh, you can just download that here. Or you can download the mutant spider. Pretty cool, right? Uh, I looked at these, they have animations, I've imported them, they work just great. You can change them around, attack, things like that, okay? Pretty cool stuff, five bucks for a model is not bad at all. All right, I'm gonna close these windows here, so make sure you screenshotted those links there if you want them, or just search for them. Toon Cat free, Mutant Spider, closing now. Okay, so once you have your assets, what we need to do is actually bring them into the project. It'd be the same with the cat as we have with the spider. You're gonna have like a source file here. So what I'm gonna do first though, is I'm gonna create a brand new folder in my project called assets. And inside of here, I'm gonna create another new folder called spider. Cause we'll have some music and things like that later on as well too. Spider, okay. And so I'm going to go into my spider folder Go to my mutant spider, and we're gonna go until we find the FBX file, okay? FBX file, just drag that into your project like so. We're gonna keep skeletal mesh selected, and I'm gonna click import all. Clear those warnings, no one cares about warnings. <laughs> You're gonna see some things here, but we're not done. Now let's grab our textures and bring those in as well too. There we go, we'll grab the PNGs. Just drag those right into here. Excellent. Now what I'm going to do is create a new material. Material, material. And we're gonna call this spider. And I'm gonna drag my three textures here onto the screen. Like so. Oh, here's the third one. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna quickly connect the RGB to the base color here of this one, the ambient occlusion, that's the black and white one here, to ambient occlusion, and the normal map to the normal map there. Apply and save. Now what I need to do is go into my skeletal mesh, double click that, and right where it says material slot right here, I'm going to click that and search for the spider material that I just created and apply. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we can actually click preview animation and it will show the animation sequence on this if we have one, but we don't actually. On the cat, it's actually built in where you can simply just import the FBX and then it just works. But on the spider, I need to bring in those animations separately. And you may run into that 
in different projects as well. So what I'm going to do is see all these FBX files here. I'm gonna drag those into my project. Again, sometimes they're separate, sometimes they're together. You never know until you get the file. And I'm just gonna drag those into my project like so. And I'm going to make sure my skeleton is selected already, which it is, so it can attach it to those. Okay, and there's our animations. Now, if I go and find my skeletal mesh that we imported already, right here, preview animation, now I can see all of my animations, and we're gonna be using the walk animation. And you can see this little guy's walking around, so cute. All right, close out of that. So we've got our spider in here, and that's cool, but we really can't do anything with it yet. So we need to change some things around so we can actually use this in our game. So I'm gonna right click here, somewhere in this assets folder. And uh, actually I'm gonna go one level up and I'm going to right click in here and say blueprint class. And we're gonna do a building prop. So it can be moved and it can be destroyed, okay? Click building prop and we're gonna call this spider prop. I'm going to double click the spider prop. And now what I wanna do is on this top layer here, I'm gonna to go to add, and we're gonna type in skeletal mesh or click it from right here. Okay, skeletal mesh, press enter. And what we're going to do is find our skeletal mesh asset right here. So it's the mutant spider skeletal mesh. And then what we're going to do is click Anim to play for animation, and we want the walk animation. And now look at our little guys walking around, how cute. Okay, compile and save, and close out of this. Excellent, now I can grab this, grab this blueprint class and just put it here in my project, which is pretty awesome. I can press R to make it really big. I can press W and press Alt and drag to make another one. And then what you can actually do is just play this and see what happens if you want. I'm gonna delete one of these spawn points here and we'll move our little guy right here. And let's just go ahead and run the project and see what happens. Okay, and here we go. I don't even have to start the game to see that they are walking. That's pretty awesome, but uh-oh, what is going on here? I'm walking through them. I can't walk through a giant spider. I'm supposed to die. Well, we need to fix that because right now our skeletal mesh doesn't have a collider. So I'm gonna alt tab back over to here. And there's a problem though, because with UEFN on a static mesh, you can add a collider, but not on a skeletal mesh. It's a big problem actually. So what we need to do is create a static mesh from our skeletal mesh first. So find the skeletal mesh object, it says it right there, double click it, and then you're gonna see something that says make static mesh, click that. And I'm gonna put it in the assets spider folder, and the name is going to be spider static mesh. We're gonna save that. Close out of this little guy here, and now we're gonna find our spider static mesh. There it is, double click that, and you'll see that we have the same thing except he's not animated. So what we're going to do is give it a collision or a collider. So click the collision tab here, and you can do some of these more simpler ones here. I'm gonna click auto convex collision, so it makes a nice collision for me. You'll notice nothing happened. Make sure you go here to the bottom right and click apply. Now we have a collision on there. And if you can't see your collision, you can actually go to show and then you can turn on simple collision or complex collision on here as well too. But if you don't see it, click simple collision. Now, if you have simple collision clicked and nothing's there, it means you didn't apply that collision down here, okay? It happened to me multiple times, make sure you do that. So now we've got our collider. I'm gonna click save on this. So the thing is, Again, you can't add a collider on a skeletal mesh, which is really annoying, it's a limitation. So what we're doing is a workaround. So we're gonna go here into our blueprint class, like so. We added a skeletal mesh onto the prop, okay? And we know it's a prop because if I click class settings up here, okay, it says building prop. That's what we want as the parent prop. And you're gonna see the static mesh component here. What we're gonna do is pick the spider 
static mesh on the right hand side. Spider static mesh. Now if you look closely, you're gonna see that there's two meshes here, which is super annoying, but we'll fix that in a second. So right here, you're gonna see simulation generates hit events. We wanna turn that on and we wanna generate overlap events on here as well too. So we have those on right there. And the last thing I wanna do is simply turn off visible, okay? That's it. Now make sure on your skeletal mesh, you don't turn any of those collisions on, okay? We don't want anything interfering, only with our static mesh, okay? I'm gonna click compile and save. And then let's reload the game and see what happens. I'm also gonna delete these two spiders so we don't have any problems. Sometimes when you drag things into your project and then you change the blueprints for them, how they function, the things that are already in your editor will cause it to fail. So make sure you delete those things as needed. So let's drag our spiders back into the screen here from our blueprint, okay? And let's rerun it. Also, you see on my screen it says editor is not connected. This happens sometimes, it is connected. It's just been showing me this error today for whatever reason. And here we go. So look, now when I walk into it, I get stuck. That's because there's a collider here, just like on a building, all right? Pretty cool. So we've got our little spiders moving and blockable, which is pretty awesome. I'm gonna give you one tip and workaround if your skeletal mesh will not disappear in game when the animation's playing, which I've seen before. What we're gonna do is create a transparent material. So you can right click next to your model or wherever you want, material and material. And I'm gonna call this transparent. I'm gonna double click it and I'm going to create a vector three or a vector constant three. There we go. And I'm gonna change the color to white and I'm gonna plug that into the base color. And then what I'm going to do is right click again and type in constant. And now you see we have a constant here of zero. I would like to apply this to my opacity, but we need to change the blend mode of our material first. So I'm gonna click our material itself on the left hand side over here on the bottom. Instead of opaque, I want translucent. And then I'm gonna take my zero value and plug that in to opacity and notice how it disappeared. Save and close. And now what I can do is I can go to my static mesh in here where we put our collision. Now what I can do is for the material, instead of spider, I'm just gonna pick transparent. And notice now our spider is completely gone. And this will make sure that it's never visible in the game if the game decides to glitch at all and show that static mesh in our blueprint. So that's the second option you have. Let's do one more thing to make sure all of this is working as expected. Back in our editor, I'm gonna select my spider here Scroll down, and let's just make sure that our spider can be destroyed by making sure can be damaged is on. Now I'm gonna to go to my Fortnite devices and look for an item granter, like so. I'm gonna place it in front of the player, and what we'll do is give the player a weapon to be able to use here in the game. Item list, expand, expand, and I'm going to type in a shotgun, equip granted item on, and now let's make a simple trigger. Just type in trigger there, and I'll put the trigger right over here. So now that you've got your trigger on the ground, let's click our item granter and scroll all the way down here to the user options functions and what we want to do is grant this to the player. So we're going to select grant item, open up this array here. We're going to select our trigger and on triggered. When it's triggered, we're going to grant this item to the player. Let's push changes and see what happens. Here we go, start game. There's my gun, let's shoot him. Okay, so notice how nothing appears to be happening here. 
And that's because we have to set up one more property. And I wanted to show you that on purpose because there's some things you gotta change that don't make a whole lot of sense, but you've gotta do it. So we're gonna go to our assets and our spider prop. We're gonna double click it here. And what we wanna do is we wanna change the resource type of our spider. So search over here on the details, RES for resource, okay? And you're gonna notice that it says resource type none, okay? So one thing you could do is switch this to wood or stone or something else, uh, take off allow resource to drop, and it would give you the damage that wood takes or that stone takes. But I found a better way to do this, but that's the easy way in case you just wanna do it real quick, make it wood and get some damage on this thing. The other thing we can do is search for attributes, okay? And here in the attribute init keys, okay? Make sure this top building prop is selected. And this is part of the official Epic tutorial. And they don't explain why you have to do this, but you do have to do this. So normally they would just go onto here and they would select like prop wood. These will actually change how much damage that your prop has. Because right now we can't change the damage of props or the health of props in the game. You can't, it's not part of the game. As far as 24.10 version, we cannot give props life. So this is how you change the damage. These are pre-built HP systems in here. And so I'm gonna go down to one that's called Soldier. I played with a lot of these to find one that felt right. I'm gonna click Soldier, and for the ability, it doesn't really matter. And on the second one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click Soldier. And you may be asking, what does this even do? And the answer is, I kind of don't know, but two is it's required. Uh, and three is changing these will change the health of your object, okay? World difficulty, I'm going to leave it as is here. Not gonna change that at all. So compile, save, and reload. Weapon. See how it's taking damage? And again, you can play with some of those properties here. I'm gonna exit. You can play with some of those properties in your blueprint on the attributes to change some of the health on there. Some of these have shields, some of these don't. I don't know, you have to play with them all. So now we have this really cool prop that you can actually kill, but it's not quite done yet. So the next things we wanna do is get some particle effects and some sound effects added. So I wanna add a cool effect when the spider dies that it explodes. Now we could grab some of the default effects that are here with the UEFN, which you may need to do. I went and bought one on Epic Games and I wanna show you how that process works. So I went onto Epic Games and I searched for VFX, but very important make sure you select Niagara VFX. People have made these in many different ways and some have blueprints and things like that. Make sure you get Niagara ones, okay? And then what I did was in the Unreal Engine, you have to have Unreal Engine installed, okay, to do this. You click Add to Project. And I'm gonna click the project that I have here, Add to Project. Now I'm here in Unreal Engine. It looks like UEFN, but it's not. Okay, I'll scroll in here and I'll see that it was added to my project, okay? Ultimate Magic Bundle. And so what I did was I went into this Magic Bundle and I found things that I liked. So I went over here to Niagara and I looked at the one that said Poison. Because I think spiders are kind of green and they should have poison on them. And you can open these and look at them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Poison Impact the poison muzzle and the poison trail. I could do all of these, but I'm just gonna grab the poison ones and we'll probably only use one. So with those three selected, I'm gonna right click, asset actions, and then I'm gonna go over here to migrate. It's gonna select all the things I need for those three and I'm gonna click okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the directory of UEFN, my project. So I'll go to UEFN and here, this top content folder, it has to be this top folder, I'm going to right click and go to Show in Explorer. It's gonna give me something that looks like this. I'm gonna click the folder up here and copy that path. And then back in Unreal Engine, 
I'm going to copy up here or click up here and paste that path and press enter. Now I'm going to click select folder. Now I'm going to close out of Unreal Engine. And that's how you migrate assets from Unreal Engine into UEFN. So if I go over here to my folder now, Spider Squisher, you're going to see the ultimate magic bundle. All right. Mag magic projectiles, Niagara, poison, and look, there they are. Poison impact. There we go. Now, if you want to play with your emitters a little bit like I like to do, I can change some of the sizes for the initialized particle. I can go to my sprite size and change it to, you know, 600 to 900 in size just to make it bigger. You can do that for all of these. Play around with them to your liking. It may not look correct, but you can fiddle. I'm a good old fiddler. And uh, you can make these, you can just make these a lot bigger. So I'm going to say 70 to 100 and 70 to 100. I just want it really visible. Okay. Some big juicy juices. All right. Uh, save that. Close out of that there. Okay. I brought in some custom particles. You don't have to. You'll be able to use the built-in ones. I'll show you how to do that now. So let's go to our assets folder and click our blueprint class. Okay, when the spider dies, we want it to do stuff. So with the spider prop selected, I'm gonna scroll down here, okay? And what we're going to do is under effects, we're gonna do death particles, okay? And I'm gonna search for my poison impact, okay? We can also pick a death sound, which is really awesome. And I think we should probably do that right now. So compile and save. And let's go grab a sound. So you're going to need dot wave files for your sound. And I happen to have one of those. You can grab any free sound effect or use built in ones that are here in UEFN. I brought one in. And so I'm going to go to my splatter dot wave and drag it into my project and you're gonna see it right here. I'm gonna right click it and go to create queue and just press enter. Now I'm gonna go into my assets folder, spider prop blueprint, scroll back down here to our effects and for the death sound, I'm going to click that and type in splatter. There it is, my splatter, excellent. You can also play sounds when the bullets are hitting. And I'll use a built-in one on here. Maybe they have a splash one. There we go, we'll use a splash sound effect so I just, just so I don't have to go find some more. Uh, break effect, okay, this all looks good to me. Now there's something that's interesting on here that you may be interested in. Death particle socket name. So I'm gonna type in FX head and press enter. My own typing, my own words, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna close out of this. Now let's go into the spider folder. We need to change the static mesh socket, okay? So I'm gonna go here into spider and I'm gonna scroll down here to my static mesh like so. And over here on the right hand side, you're gonna see something called a socket manager, all right? Socket manager. And what I can do is I can add a socket on here called fx underscore head, okay? And typing the exact same name that I typed over in the blueprint. And you're gonna see this pivot down here now. So I can actually create a, like a socket for where the explosion's gonna happen from. And so I can make it blast from the head if I wanted to. And I wanted to use that as an example there. So just for fun, I'm gonna leave that there instead of keeping it in the middle of the body or something else. And I'm gonna click save, FX underscore head. So now let's go ahead and save our project and try it again. This spider's got a lot of life. Moment of truth, splatter. All right, it worked. I saw the big juicy juice right there. Excellent. End game. Okay, cool. So we just added our own effects. We added our own splatter, which is 
awesome on there and the music and everything. Now, if you don't have access to custom assets like that, of course, you can just change this to whatever is available here inside of Fortnite. And they've got a few different, very few different ones on there, like explosion, whatever. So you can use those if you want. Same with the music or rather the sound effects as well too. So we've got some cool effects. We've got spiders dying. And now it's time to make some intelligent spiders. Ones that can follow you and chase you and look at you and everything in between. Are you ready to write some code? Here we go. So what we're gonna do is go to our verse explorer. If you don't see it there, you go to verse, verse explorer, and we're gonna right click on this top file here and say, add new verse file to project. And we're gonna call this one game manager, all right? And create. And then you can click open the verse here to open up your verse game manager dot verse. What we're going to do, I'll keep this very straightforward. We're gonna link up our enemies, our spiders, then we're going to tell them just to keep looking at the player and keep moving towards the player. It's a very basic math, very basic AI. We're gonna do that in a game loop. So first things first, let's store our enemies. So var enemies is gonna be an array of type creative prop. What we've created is a creative prop. And before you ask me, you can't spawn props at runtime. You can only you can only spawn the pre-built Fortnite props from your code. I can't have different spawn points where they just keep coming to life. I cannot do that as of 24.10 in the UEFN. So we have to pre-create our enemies and drag them in here. That's just the way that it is. You gotta do it, I gotta do it, all right? So there's our enemies, and last thing is at editable. We wanna be able to drag them into the editor. Then what we wanna do is have those enemies continually look at the player, but we don't have a reference to our player yet either, so let's do that. We're gonna say var player or players, make another array with these square braces, player equals array. If you're completely new to code and don't understand it at all, watch my other videos. I have a whole course on learning to use the verse programming language, but we're gonna create an array of players. Really, we only care about the first player, but we'll do it in an array because it's much easier. All right, and then what I wanna do is create a new method or function called initialize players. I like to keep my code modularized, colon void, the function's not gonna return anything. And I just wanna get a list of the players. So I'm gonna say set players equals get play space dot get players. That's built in Fortnite code for getting the players. And it's going to set them here in our array, our variable that we have stored, okay? And then now that we have the player, we can actually, here in on begin, we can first initialize it, so initialize players. This is gonna be called when the device starts or the game starts. And now we need to go through all of our enemies and get them to move. Okay, but the code's a little bit verbose. So I wanna create a new file. We can just do it right in here in our uh, Visual Studio code. So I'm gonna right click new file and we're gonna call this enemyai.verse. We're gonna give them some simulated smarts, all right? And in here, we're not even gonna create a class, we're just gonna create like a public function that we can use and call from anywhere. Fun little function, okay? But first things first is we're gonna need some imports, okay? We're gonna need fortnite.com slash devices, unrealengine.com slash temporary slash spatial math, verse.org simulation, and fortnite.com dot slash characters. We're importing modules from another library code that was written by Epic Games, okay? And pause the video if you need to write those things down on there, those imports. So we're gonna create a new function name called follow player. We're gonna pass in an enemy of type creative prop. We're gonna type in a player of type player. And then because it's gonna be in a loop, we have to do something called add a suspense uh, attribute here on the 
tip of our end of our uh, function, colon void equals. If you're new to programming, this is like completely crazy. I'm not going in depth on it. I have other videos for that. So don't be too stressed out. You can learn this. I'm just showing you what we're what we need to do to get this working. Okay. Uh, and we're using suspense because we're going to throw this off on a new thread and it's going to run a continuous loop for every single enemy. And we don't want it to slow down our game. We want it just to work on its own. That's why we're putting the suspense keyword there. All right. And so what we want to do is create a loop that continually updates the position of our enemies. So I'm going to create a new variable here called move speed. And this is something you could expose colon equals. Uh, you could expose as an at editable and then your developers inside of your game can change it from the editor. However, I don't want to do it there because it runs much faster in code updating it here. So we'll leave it here for now. And then I need to create a loop. And what we're going to do in this loop is we're going to specify sleep 0.0. .0. And what that's going to do is it's going to continually go as fast as the system can go to update. Um, or we could alternatively, we could specify it as 0.1, which is about 60 frames a second. In fact, to keep things simple, I will just sleep at 60 frames a second. And so what we're going to do is go through the enemy and basically update its position every single time. So uh, 60 frames a second. So we're going to say if and what do we want to do? We want to make sure that the basically that we have a Fortnite character where we can check its position and we want to make sure that the enemy is valid. So follow along, follow along, kids. If player character colon equals player dot get fort character. We're calling another function there, but we're using square braces because it might fail. And then we're going to say enemy dot is valid. Call another function there. I'm going to put a colon here. I'm also going to slide this window closed so you can see more of it on my screen. And then I'm going to put the keyword block here for a moment and explain what's happening. OK, so basically what we're doing is we're grabbing the Fortnite character from the player. That's going to have information we need, such as its position. I control clicked on that. And if I control click on Fort Player, we're going to see that it has some things that we need, specifically positional get transform. We need to know where the player is. And so I'm grabbing the Fortnite character so I can grab its transform. Transform. The next thing, and this is really, really important, enemy dot is valid. If this fails, this block of code won't run, all right? Uh, which is what we want. We don't want it to run. Uh, if the enemy is not valid, that means the enemy has been destroyed. Okay. And you can have a runtime error or crash. If you don't check for this very, very important. In fact, right here with the, if I'm going to say else. So if it fails, I want to break out of the loop. I don't want to loop anymore. It's dead. That enemy is toast. No more looping. Very, very important that you put this here. Very, very, very important. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is just write some some math. I know, I know. This took me a lot of work to figure all this out. So uh, it's gonna be hard to explain. It was hard to implement. But prop location colon equals enemy dot get transform dot translation. A translation is the X and the Y and the Z position where it is in the world in 3D space. Okay. Now we're gonna say player location colon equals player character dot get transform dot translation. So let's also get the position of the player, position of the enemy, position of the player. Now we're going to do some math here. And if you don't want to understand this math, the math to look at a player or to look at an object and to move to the object, that's fine. You could just use this script if you want. This is pretty complicated stuff. It was complicated even for me. Uh, but I'm showing you how it works because it's important to know. If look direction colon equals player location minus prop location dot make unit vector 
Let me explain this right here, okay? In basic game math, if I've got two objects in 3D space, okay, let's say I'm standing here and there's a cow to my right in the field. There actually is. There's a cow out there right now. And I need to know, you know, what's the direction like that I need to move to or I need to rotate to in order to be looking at that cow. Well, you know, what we typically do is we take the two points, we subtract them. That gives us the magnitude or the length. And then what we do is we normalize it. We, we multiply this invisible triangle of points. Uh, we multiply it by an arbitrary number to normalize it. Uh, and then it helps us to get the rotation we need in order to rotate over to that object to be looking at it. Mm. Highly complicated math. I don't know all of the details behind the scenes. I know how to use it because I'm a game developer. I've done this before. And so we're, what we're doing is we're, we're subtracting one location from another and we're turning it into a, a, a vector, a data point vector that we can use here in our look direction, okay? That's what's happening. We're doing subtraction between two points, but in a vector format, okay? X, Y, and Z. I know, it's making you cry, it made me cry. Okay, now, yaw colon equals radians to degrees, all right, radians to degrees, and we're gonna use a built-in math function called arctan, this is also a common thing to use if you're any doing any game programming. I'm sorry, you can look this up if you don't understand it. Uh, arctan, look direction dot y, comma, look direction dot x. All right, so the yaw, okay, that's gonna be our z spinning around. That's me like spinning around like this, okay? That's all I care about. I don't care about looking up and down. I don't care about looking right to left. I just care about one rotation. I just want the spiders to turn on the Z axis or the yaw, okay? Now, now we have the pitch, all right? Colon equals 0, 0.0. Again, I don't care about the left and the right or the up and the down looking, okay? Now, if you had a big giant monster object where you wanted its head to look down at the creature, you would need the pitch. In which case, I'll write the code for you on this. Radians to degrees, arctan, look direction dot z. Now we're gonna use some different math. Square root. And uh, yes, I'm looking at my other code because I don't have this memorized. I'm gonna say square, oh, that's a lot of square root there. Let me just, uh, in fact, let me take off the comment for just a moment. So look direction dot z. Um, where were we? Look direction dot z comma square root. And now we're gonna say look direction dot x times look direction dot x. And then plus, I know, look direction dot y times look direction dot y. Now there are some built in math functions on here that will do this for you. Um, I just couldn't remember which ones they were in the spatial math library, so I did the math manually. But that'll do it for your pitch, looking what rotation do I need to make to be like looking down or up at my target. If my target's in the sky like an airplane, I need to be able to do the math to look up to it, right? That's what's happening right here. But I don't want to do that in our case, but I wanted you to have the code for that. So 0.0, .0 is the pitch. Lastly, we need the roll, which is going to be colon equals 0, 0.0. Again, if you're crying, I know I'm crying too. We're crying together. I understand. So now what we need to do is get the new rotation based on the diff. This is just the math, okay? We're getting the rotation that we need to look based on the magnitude of the distance between the two points. And we've converted radians to degrees to get that. And we've applied it to the yaw. I know there's some complicated math going on in Arctan. You can look that up on Google to see what that does. And uh, we're gonna go and say new rotation, colon equals make rotation from yaw, pitch, roll, degrees. Okay? Yaw, pitch, roll. Now this, if I control click it, this is a built-in function as part of the spatial math library from Unreal Engine. 
they gave it to us as part of this uh, nice little nice little package for us there and uh, that looks really good that looks good to me okay so this is a rotation but now I want to do movement and I want it to I want it to move nicely all right movement we did the rotation let's do the movement with some linear interpolation let's make it nice and smooth all right lerp location colon equals lerp for linear interpolation prop location player location delta time times move speed well really just move speed that's what i meant to put on here there we go move speed and then uh, what we want to do is final location colon equals vector 3 x colon equals lerp location dot x y is colon equals lerp location dot y and z is colon equals 0, 0.0 okay we're not moving anything on the up and down axis for position just x and the y so lerp what lerp's going to do is it's going to take two different points and then it's going to give us how much we need to move between those points but over a speed okay a value that helps like helps it move in a consistent flow and so it's not going to move the whole way it's just moving a little tiny frame but it's giving us a number back that's going to make it nice and smooth all the way across so that's what's happening with our lerp right here and so the final location i'm just creating a new vector um, because i don't want to move anything with the z location Okay, imagine if an object flew in the air or something on accident. I don't want it to be looking. I just want that zero. So I created a new vector that only includes the X and the Y. Okay. Lastly, I want to say if enemy.teleport2, it has to be in an if statement because it can fail. Say final location and new rotation, like so. And this if does not have parentheses in it. It's just a different way to write an if statement okay so we are rotating and moving and doing all kinds of things before i leave though i do want to point out here on the yaw i'm going to subtract 90 degrees on the yaw because for whatever reason here in uefn everything seems to rotate 90 degrees off and so i'm just fixing that little issue here in our code all right enemy ai save go back to our game manager and now what i want to do is i want to iterate through our enemies and make them all move so i'm going to create a new method here called initialize enemies void equals and we want to go through all of our uh, enemies and then have them follow the player so i'm say if player colon equals players zero so we're just going to grab the first player from the array hope one's there if it is it'll it'll succeed we'll make another loop we'll say for x colon equals zero dot dot enemies dot length we're just doing a different type of loop here minus one so we want to go through the entire array and then we want to say if enemy colon equals enemies x and then what do we want to do is we want to follow the player. So I'm going to say spawn. I'll tell you about that in a second. Follow player. We want to pass in the enemy and we want to pass in the player. Okay. What's happening here is I'm going, I'm grabbing the first player and then I'm going through all the enemies and I'm grabbing each one. I could have done this a different way too. Uh, I just chose to do a range operator. Uh, with the X grabbing the enemy and I'm using the spawn keyword which you can do to kind of spin off a new thread and we can do that because in our enemy AI we have a suspends function so it's gonna it's gonna run it off on its own thread okay so if I was to write a print statement right here okay it would call immediately after the spawn it wouldn't be frozen but if I didn't have it there I could freeze up my entire program by not having the spawn on there okay and then we're gonna follow the player. That's what's happening here. The last thing I wanna do is initialize enemies and save.
I know it probably feels like we're going super fast, and we kind of are. But otherwise, this would be a three-hour video. Verse, verse, build code, build verse code. <laughs> and then I wanna click my, I wanna go up here into my, actually, I don't have it yet. I'm gonna create, click this here and go to new folder. We're gonna call this one game. And I'm going to go to my content browser, creative devices, and just toss in my game manager. Right click it here on the outliner, move to the game folder. You'll notice now that we've got an array of enemies that we can drag in here. So currently I have two enemies. So let's just put one back here and I just clicked Alt and drag to, to uh, duplicate it. I'm press W to move. And I'm gonna click my game manager, add three elements and drag my three spiders into this. And if everything worked correctly, when I run this here, they should be rotating and moving toward the player. Oh, they're going fast. This is creepy. Ha ha ha, run. Okay, let's go over here. Let's make sure they don't look at us. Oh, he's still looking at us. This is definitely creepy. Okay, so it's working. It's just going way, way too fast. Escape, end game. And that's why we want to do this in code here because we can quickly just change the speed in our enemy AI. So instead of move speed of 0.1, I'm going to say 0 0.01. Save it. Verse, build verse code, push verse changes, and let's try again. Okay, much better. They're moving at a more spidery normal pace. Uh, I could go a little bit faster, but man, these are pretty creepy, right? And look how they're looking at us. Oh my gosh. Ah. Anyway, uh, this is looking pretty good. We've got animating, moving spiders. Uh, and I think uh, we should do even more with this. Uh, we should have them damage us and we'll just start a whole on battle here. So let's finish here and keep moving on and forward. So I don't think it's really fair. We can kill the spiders, but they can't do any damage to us. Not fair at all. Now, here's the thing. Epic Games has not really given us any way to damage the player. The only way you can damage the player is from another player or from a trap or a damage volume. It's super annoying. We really can't do anything at all, but I figured out a way to kind of make it work. Really cool kind of way, actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Fortnite devices and we're gonna type in damage volume like so yeah that big ugly thing right there and what you're going to do is we are going to drag this damage volume over our little spider here all right i'm going to delete these other spiders and here's what we'll do we'll make a damage zone on the spider so when the spider touches you that damage zone moves with it and hurts the player it's a complete hack, I know, uh, but it'll work. It'll work just fine. At least until they allow us to actually damage props and get damage back. I don't know why we can't do that now. So damage zone. And what we're gonna do is just change its height So and its width. I'm gonna zoom out here and here in the zone width and depth and all that, I'm gonna say 0 0.3 and 0.3 and 0.3 just to see what happens. So here's our little spider. And what I want is the damage area to be a little bit in front of the spider, okay? And so it's still a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna say 0.1. And you probably can barely see it on my screen, but we just want that little box just in front of the spider and the, the depth, we'll say 0.2. And I just want it so when he bumps into us, we die or we lose life. And I don't need it that high either. I'll say zone height, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.2. Okay, looking nice. It's kind of sticking out in the front. And in fact, I'm gonna make it a little bit more. Yeah, maybe 0.3. There we go, a little bit more, just so he has a, a fighting chance. Excellent. Let's look at the settings here. Gameplay only, yes. Damage tick rate, two seconds. That means you only get damage every two seconds that you're into that. I think that's fine. Let's pretend that every two seconds the spider attacks. 
Now remember, we can't change the spider's animations. We can't do an attack animation uh, if we want the spider to move. It's just the way that it is. Yes, you can use a sequencer, and yes, you can use some of the other cinematic tools for the spiders, but if we want our spider to actually act like a real NPC and chase the player and things like that, you can't change anything. They just don't let you do that right now. So, two seconds sounds good. Any team, that's fine. Any class affects everything, sure. Uh, you could do a cylinder if you wanted or a box for the shape. This all looks good to me, okay? It should just work automatically and damage everybody. So what I'm going to do now is we see this little spider prop here, okay? So I'm gonna create a new folder here at the top called enemies. And what I'm going to do is grab my spider and move it to enemies because we're gonna have a few in here and I don't wanna search for them. Now, this damage volume, what I'm going to do is right click it and we are going to attach to our spider prop. And see there's a an FX head right there, that's the socket we created. I don't wanna attach it to the socket, I just wanna attach it to the normal body. So it's right there. Now if I move my spider prop, the damage volume is going to move also, which is exactly what we want. So the idea is when the spider gets you, it hurts you if you don't kill it in time. So to copy and paste more instances of this, I need to select both of these. I can't just select the top one. I have to select both of them and then alt drag and alt drag again. Now let's say I want a bigger one, right? And if I put my wrote my scale on here, notice how everything is getting much bigger, which is actually fine. I think it'll make it nice and easy for us here. So we got a big spider, alt and drag with both of those selected, like so. And now we've got a series of spiders and our screen with the proper uh, boxes there for the, the zones. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. The next thing I wanna do, because I know this battle's about to get intense, is I think I should probably click my item grantor, um, give ourselves some more items. Instead of current item, I'm gonna say all items. Let's grant all items. And I wanna add a, a minigun in here and see if there's some type of rocket launcher. This is about to get intense, so. All right. Rocket launcher, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Save. And then let's just make sure in our game folder that our game manager has all of our new spiders, which it really doesn't. And just to make sure we are safe here, I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna say spider prop, spider prop two, spider prop three, and spider prop four. If your spiders are not moving, which has happened to me multiple times, just make sure that they are in the game manager array here. And let's go ahead and push changes. Now, when a spider gets close to me, I would expect to lose some life. Ooh, yep, bad spider. That's it. Take that. Come on. Oh, this is a tough spider. All right. Oh yeah, now the big mama. You're going down. You up. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. Now, the other thing that you'll need to do, which I'm not going to cover in this video for the sake of time, but is all of your damage volume devices when your spider is destroyed, we also need to deactivate these damage volumes, okay? And you can do that by going into your code and then in your game manager, making an at editable for all your volume devices. And then as your, uh, as your props die, you just go ahead and uh, remove those. And so I'll show you right now how to detect when your prop dies because we need to track the score anyway. So what we've done so far is we've got our cool little spiders here who can follow us and chase us. We can kill them and they explode and things are looking really good. 
because we have a lot of limited functionality and we can't even listen for when a prop is destroyed, how crazy you can't subclass a prop. Oh my goodness, so many limitations, hopefully not forever. We have to do some silly things. So here in the Fortnite devices, we are gonna look for a prop manipulator, prop manipulator. And what this is going to allow us to do is detect when props are destroyed within a zone. Really dumb, I know, whatever. So here's my prop manipulator. I'm gonna right click this and move it to my game folder. And uh, really important, on your prop manipulator, all right, we need to click affects all objects in a zone because what we don't wanna do is manually reference and drag a hundred different props on here. So manually, we wanna click that and affect all objects in a zone. And you're gonna see this nice little purple box here. For zone width, I'm gonna say 50. Look how long it is, see? The depth, I'm gonna say 50. Really big, right? Just a whole entire area. I'll leave the height the same. And what's gonna happen is anytime a prop is damaged or destroyed, we can get a notification about it. That way we can increase the player score. Oh, how cool is that? Um, and this is, you know, these prop zones are good for like things like this, the modify prop health. Like if you wanted like a, a health fountain and when players or props, whatever, go into it, they get health. You know, you can do stuff like that. Um, we're not going to change any of that right now. So what we're gonna do is go into our code and we're gonna reference that prop manipulator. So over in our game manager, right here where it says at editable, we are going to say at editable var prop manipulator, prop manipulator device equals prop manipulator device that was verbose <laughs> all right so what do we want to do is we want to listen for whenever a prop is destroyed and so i think initializing it in the enemy section is probably fine because it has to do with enemies uh, because they're props so right here in our initialize enemies i'm going to say prop manipulator dot destroyed event dot subscribe and what we want to do is subscribe to whenever one of those spiders dies and I need to give it one of my own functions, which I have not created yet. So I'll say on prop destroyed, or I could have called it on spider destroyed. And I just need to create that method or function now. I'll call this on prop destroyed. And that's a that's code that Epic Games wrote. They wrote a destroyed event where you can subscribe to those events. And so I'm just listening for it. And because I looked at the code inside, I know that it's gonna give me an agent. Almost everything gives you an agent in these callbacks, all right? And what do we wanna do when a prop's destroyed? Well, what I wanna do is like increase the score and if you get a certain score, the game ends. Um, and so I don't have any scoring stuff on here, so let's do that now. Let's say var current kill count of type int equals zero and var, actually not a var, a constant this time, total kills required of type int equals 10. We wanna kill 10 spiders in order to win the game. And I also noticed that I don't have an end game device. So let's go back here to our uh, editor, type in end, pass in an end game device. I'm gonna right click this and put this in my game folder. And uh, all I wanna do is uh, the activating note, Let's see here, activating team, winning team is the activating team. There it is. Winning team is the activating team. That's it. That's all I'm gonna do. And then I will, back in my code, I'll make an at editable, editable var end device of type end game device equals end game device like so. So now we can end the game when we get enough kills. So down here, I wanna say set current kill count to plus equals one. So whenever a prop is destroyed, let's increase our kill count. One, just increase it by one. Then if current kill count is greater than or equal to total kills required, 
and I'm doing greater than or equal to's instead of just equal to, because like, what if you shoot a rocket launcher and it kills like three of them at the same time? Uh, who knows what might happen? We wanna, we wanna account for that. But here we'll say end device dot activate, and we'll pass in the agent. Okay, the agent that came from the on prop destroy, the agent that killed it. Hey, they're the ones that won. And since this is a single player game, we don't need to do any other, you know, complicated code. End the game here if we've hit the current kill count. That's really awesome. But what about user interface? I really need to show this to the player, right? Make it a, a more immersive experience. Uh, so I'm not even gonna test this code yet. We're gonna go build some UI. So I'm gonna open up the left side here, right click my spider squisher folder, or whatever you called yours, new file, and I'm gonna call this gameui.verse. We are gonna keep this super simple. We're not doing any crazy user interface today. Simple user interface, all right? Uh, okay, so our user interface, there's a few things we're gonna need. Using unrealengine.com slash temporary slash UI. We're also, not that, we're also gonna need using fortnite.com slash UI and using, woo, Unreal Engine. Now you know why I paste things sometimes. <laughs> Temporary slash spatial math. Uh, and then using verse.org slash simulation. I could have shown you all the errors that happen when we don't have the libraries in, but it's just easier to get them out of the way this way. Um, but this is what we'll need. And I'll make a new class, game UI colon equals class. And in this, uh, I wanna have such as something simple on the screen that shows a label with our kill count. That's it. Okay, so here we go. Spider kills text. We're gonna create a localizable message. Now, if you wanna, if you want to update user interface, you have to use these messages, okay? So I'm going to say uh, spider kills test text, and this is of type message, and we'll say spiders killed. Um, and I need the equal sign, like so. Now here's the thing. This makes it immutable and static. This is not gonna work for us, okay? I need a way to update this text. And how you do that is right here after the localizes, Remember, this is a message. This is a special, a special class just for the, uh, the UI, okay? Right here, we're gonna add parameter. I'm gonna call it kills of type int. I know it's, it's weird syntax, but that's what we're adding right here. And then where it says spiders killed, now I'll do our little string interpolation and say kills. So it's gonna grab the kills variable and it's gonna put it into the string. Easy peasy. If you don't understand this, it just takes time. Just use it over and over again. Now we need a widget, the actual button widget or label widget. I'm gonna use a button because I like the way that it looks. So I'm gonna say kill count widget of type button loud equals button loud. We'll just make an empty one for now. Just a, a button, nothing else. And then, I need a function that's going to update the kill count every time we uh, kill a spider. So I'm gonna make a new function called update kill count total kills. I'm not gonna do the math in here. With user interface, user interface in programming should never think. It should only display what it's given. You should never do math and things in here that manipulate data. So here, I don't wanna add the existing kills. I just want the total kills I need to display. All right, so that's what we're gonna put here, of type int equals, or colon void equals. And then we'll say kill count widget dot set text, set text, spider kills text, and then I'm gonna pass in the total kills. So in this function here, update kill count, we're gonna pass in the total kills and then we're gonna change the text of our widget with those total kills, okay? Spider kills text. So we're taking this thing here and we're passing the kills into this. And then we're taking that 
and setting it into the text. If you're really confused, like honestly, all we're really doing is um, is updating our text. Honestly, uh, we're we're updating it here first, and then we would set it. We would set the text. We're just gonna do it all right here in the same spot. Okay. Now, how would I call this? Well, here back in our game manager, the first thing we would need to do is make an instance of our new class. So I would say var uh, game UI of type game UI equals game UI. So right here, I've made an instance of that class so I can use it. And then down here on prop destroyed, this is where I would, whenever we kill a spider, that's when I would want to update it. So I would say game UI, the new class we just instantiated. And I would say update kill count with the total kills. So this would be current kill count. Autocomplete does not work. Current kill, nope, still doesn't work. <laughs> Woo! All right, game UI dot update kill count. So every time we kill a spider, we call the UI. Now we actually haven't given the player any user interface yet. So we need to actually show the button on the screen. All we've done is we've updated a button, but we've never specified anywhere to actually show it on the screen yet. So let's do that now. A new function or method called create UI for player. We're gonna pass in the player so we can show the UI to that player, void equals. Now, uh, we're gonna go through a series of things in working with our canvas and widgets and anchors. It's really simple, simplified version of all the features that are available. And all I want right now is a simple version. Okay, so here's how we get the player UI. If player UI colon equals get player UI, pass in the player. So get player UI is a publicly available function. If I control click it, you're gonna see that it's in the UI module of temporary, get player UI. Okay, they wrote the code for this, I did not. So I'm grabbing it and it could fail. It says decides, it could fail, which is why we put it in the if statement and it's why we use the square braces instead of the um, parentheses, okay? So there's our player UI, we created a variable to store it in. Now what do I wanna do? So once I have that, um, I just probably need to set the initial text for our spider kills text because right now uh, there's nothing in it. So I'm gonna just set it to zero when we first create this widget. So kill count widget dot set text spider kills count zero. So the very first time we create this widget, I just wanna set that to zero, okay? I don't want it to be blank. I want it to look proper. I'm gonna create a new variable, all right, called my canvas. You can call this whatever you want, all right, my canvas of type canvas equals canvas. You've seen this syntax before, it just looks a little bit different. What's happening here is we're creating a new instance of a canvas. Normally you might see something like this with the curly braces here to initialize it. We're doing an inline initialization right here in our code. And this is a verse feature, but you typically are only gonna see it or use it mostly for the user interface. So don't worry about it if it's too confusing right now. So we're just doing an inline instantiation. And inside of that, I'm gonna create a new variable called slots. That's my variable name, okay? And we're gonna create a new array, all right? We're just doing an inline array here, okay? You've seen the curly braces before. It's the same thing, same thing. We're just doing it with a colon and going down. It's kind of like on the if statements, there's the ones you can do with parentheses and the ones you can do um, with the colons. We're just doing it the colon format and inline array, All right? The variable name is slots. That's, that's my name that I put in there and an array. And this is very typical with your user interface widgets. You're gonna do this almost every single time. You have a canvas, which is your big square and your slots are the different slots that go in there, like maybe categories or groupings and then each slot can have something in it, okay? In our case, we're gonna have one widget, really. That's it. So one slot, one widget kind of thing. So new keyword called canvas slot. So again, if I, you can control click these things and it's a struct or a structure and it has some pre-built things in it, okay? We're instantiating a new one. Same thing as with those curly braces from before, except we're just using the colon, all right? to do it in line. Okay, we have anchors 
we have offsets, we have alignment, and we have a size to content. The anchors are going to anchor our widget or widgets to different positions on the screen. And offset is like, yes, it's anchored, but let's anchor it plus 10 or plus five, like to give it some space between the edges or whatever you want. Uh, and alignment is how your widget itself is aligned. Uh, you'll see all of this in just a moment. So we're gonna say anchors, colon equals, anchors, minimum, colon equals vector two, x colon equals 0 0.5, y colon equals 0, 0.0, all right, come out of that. We're gonna say maximum colon equals vector two, x colon equals 0 0.5, y colon equals 0, 0.0. Let me uh, view word wrap, okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's yelling at us data, yeah, because I haven't finished initializing yet here, okay. So with the Unreal widgets and UI, top left is zero, zero, okay? X goes from left to right, okay? So the left, top right would be zero, zero. The far right side, okay, it would be one, from zero to one, all right? So it goes from left to right and from top to bottom. The bottom of the screen, is gonna be one on the y-axis. So x goes from left to right, y goes up and down, and it starts from the top, okay? Other languages, other systems, other platforms is completely different. That's how it works here with UEFN, okay? And uh, awesome. Okay, that looks good to me, anchors. Uh, and what we're saying here with our anchor is on the x, we want it in the middle. 0.5, right? Half of one is 0.5. We want it in the middle of the screen. And for Y, we want it all the way in the top, okay? Top, middle, that's where I want this thing to be. Play with these numbers and you'll see what happens. And I'm saying minimum and maximum, I want them to be the same. If you have lots of text you wanna show and you have size to content equals true, it can expand and retract. I'm saying I always want it to be the same, just to keep it simple. Offsets, all right? colon equals margin, we're gonna say top colon equals 100.0, left colon equals 0, 0.0, right colon equals 0, 0.0, and bottom colon equals 0, 0.0. Okay, um, for the offsets, okay, this is between zero and 1080, and I'm putting in 100. I want 100 points from the top coming down. Does that make sense? So I'm yes, I'm at the top with the Y on my anchor, but it's like adding padding in CSS. I just wanna add some, well, it's more like margin. I wanna add some margin, okay, from the top. That's all, just to make it look a little bit nice. Alignment, alignment colon equals vector two, X colon equals 0 0.5, Y colon equals 0 0.5. I just want it center aligned. You can play with these numbers to, to have some fun with it. Alignment, I don't think meant is supposed to be capitalized. All right, we're getting there. Uh, size to content, colon equals true. We're not gonna get very large on this though. And lastly, widget, colon equals kill count widget. <sighs> okay, we did it, I know this is brutal but you will memorize this over time and it won't be super crazy. You just gotta keep doing it, okay? Uh, and I find doing this from code is way easier than, than some of the other things that are available, okay? So we're anchoring it, giving it an offset, aligning it, sizing it to content is true. If I put in a lot of text, it would just resize it up to the maximum value. And then the actual widget that you wanna show. In our case, uh, we want the this button. We're, we're using it as a label, uh, but I just want this button that says spiders killed, okay? That is it, all right? We just designed it here. Now, where it says my canvas, we wanna line up with that line, okay? Right there, say player UI dot add widget, okay? My canvas. So remember, we're getting the player UI for a particular player, player one, player UI. And then we're adding the widget to that player's canvas. 
Now, one thing that's really important. I stored this widget here. Some people don't store their widgets. They, I could have made this widget right here. Okay, I could have made, uh, instead of my kill count widget, I could have just made a button loud widget inline right here and given it permanent text, and I would never be able to change it because I didn't store it. So any data that you want to, to change on your UI, you need to make a variable or constant for it. And when you update this, it's automatically going to update the UI for you. Okay, so you don't ever have to add it, the widget again or remove it. I've seen some people do that mistakenly. They add it and remove it because they didn't know they could hold a reference to the widget itself. Hold a reference to the widget, pass that into your canvas, and you can update this all day long without ever having to touch your player widget again. Woo! Okay, so save this file here. Save our game manager here. And so now game UI update kill count. But one thing we're not ever doing is, is doing that initialize function, the create UI for player. We didn't do that anywhere. So here in our initialize players, let's finish setting this up. I'm going to say if player colon equal players zero colon, I'm going to say game UI dot create UI for player. I'm going to pass in that player. Okay. So I'm passing in the player, player zero. Okay. Passing in player zero uh, from our players array. Okay. No big deal. Uh, if it fails, if it can't find a player, uh, then this won't run. And if you have multiple players in a game, you are going to have to change other parts of this code because we're just working with the first player. We're, we're not making it for multiple players here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have used the zero. Okay, that was a lot of code. Let's see if it actually works. So I'm going to go back to my game, verse, build verse code. All right. And I want to make sure my game managers all filled out. So it looks like I do not have my prop manipulator here in my game manager. So I'm going to select my prop manipulator. Remember, the prop manipulator is this thing we added here that lets us know when uh, something's been killed. All right. And then uh, the other one I need to add is the end game device. So the game actually ends when we get 10 kills. Now, one problem I have is I don't have 10 spiders. So I think I'll actually change it to five kills and make one more spider. So I'm gonna alt drag, make this feller a little bit bigger like so. I'm gonna go back to my game manager and just make sure I add the fifth spider on here. Spider prop number five, and I'll go back into my code and just change the total kills required to five, like so. And then we'll see if our game works. All right, moment of truth here. All right, so our user interface is on the screen. All right, spiders killed one, excellent. Take this. Oh, you think you're tough, little guy? You think you're tough? He's super tough. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, man. I'm going to run out of ammo before I kill these guys. Okay, one more. Ah, oh, don't get in build mode. No build mode. Stop it. Get out. All right. I can do this. One spider left. Let's make sure he can hurt us still. Oh, yep. He's hurting me. Okay. I killed him and the game ended. Yeah, it wasn't flashy, but it worked. You kind of built the full game here. So that's pretty awesome. We did a ton of things today, okay? We imported a skeletal mesh asset and we put animations on it. And then we did some hackery to give it a collider, which they don't let you do, but we figured it out. And then we got your skeletal mesh to follow you around and you could actually damage it and we put effects on it with gore and blood splats and sound effects and all kinds of other things and you know what we should do just to make it done is add a little bit of game music audio audio player boom and uh, what we're gonna do is change the volume to two or four there we go and uh, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go grab our music, go to my assets here, and I'm gonna go into my spider, and I'm gonna drag in a full length music. 
That's a terrible way to say that. Spider music, right click, create queue, spider music, spider music queue. Oh, take off the dash, spider music queue. Yeah, and then here, spider music queue. And then what I wanna do is not play on hit, but I want to have it always playing, yes. We'll play it straight from the device, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Autoplay, 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 just autoplay everywhere, okay? Just make this nice and easy. And uh, let's, uh, let's do one more battle here and we'll call this done. Oh, splash damage. Kill them all at once. Excellent. All right. That's it, everyone. We did it. This was a lot of work. And I will see you next time. I mean, if you subscribe and click the bell notification. Otherwise, you won't get notified and you won't be able to watch my videos. So, you should do that now. <laughs> <laughs>